Good morning. Welcome to Transfiguration Sunday. It is such a joy to have you in worship with us. Wherever you are, welcome. Whoever you are, welcome. This Sunday, as we celebrate the last Sunday of Epiphany, we are going to be concentrating and celebrating on the glory of God and how He transfigures our lives and how His light shines always. Again, we are so glad you are with us today. I invite you to center yourself, posture yourself in a sense of holiness as we come together to worship. Spirit, I will rise from the ashes of 
tomb where soldiers watched in vain was borrowed for three days. His body there would not remain. Our God has robbed the grave. from the Gospel of Mark. Six days later, Jesus took Peter, James, and John and brought them to the top of a very high mountain where they were alone. He was transformed in front of them and his clothes were amazingly bright, brighter than if he had been bleached white. Elijah and Moses appeared and were talking with Jesus. Peter reacted to all of this by saying to Jesus, Rabbi, it's good that we're here. Let's make three shrines one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He said this because he didn't know how to respond, for the three of them were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and a voice spoke from the cloud, This is my son, whom I dearly love. Listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone with them except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them not to tell anyone what they have seen until after the human one had risen from the dead. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Ask anyone who's been around church for any length of time what the biggest gift their religion brings to them, and uh, they're likely to say something like stability. We like our religion to give us terra firma in the midst of a quickly, rapidly changing world when everything else is spiraling in different directions. Our faith, we like uh, to ground us. That's why we start our prayers with uh, words like eternal Lord or uh, everlasting God. Our, one of our favorite go-to scriptures is Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Religion, we like to be solid. Even in seminary, when they're training us young pastors about how to lead the church effectively, one of the main lessons they teach us is, uh, for God's sake, don't go changing everything. People need their churches to be stable. You change too much, they tell us, and they will change their pastor. Which makes following Jesus tough for us religious folks. If nothing else, Jesus continually leads us into communion with a God who is always changing, shape-shifting, might we even say 
transfiguring. Today is Transfiguration Sunday, the day that the church around the world marvels at God's desire and ability to transform right before our very eyes. Truth be told, we've been being set up for this feast day all throughout the season after the Epiphany. Week by week, Jesus has been shape-shifting, changing our notions of who God is. We bring to the table our bedrock ideas of who we think God is and should be, and Jesus, God bless him, he changes, shapeshifts, transfigures. Over and over, this has been happening week by week. We thought God was all-powerful. Jesus shows up as a baby. We, we thought uh, God liked to hang out with only Jewish folks, especially the God of Abraham, hung out with the Jews. And then Jesus shows up with the Magi. We think God prefers religious ceremonies in religious places with religious people. And Jesus gets baptized in the wilderness by John the Baptist. We think God prefers religious folks. Jesus hangs out with the irreligious over and over and over again. All throughout the season after the Epiphany, Jesus has been transfiguring. And it leads to today, the Feast of the Transfiguration. You know the story, you just heard it. Maggie just read it for us. Jesus takes his three favorite disciples up on the mountain, Peter, James, and John. And there on the mountain, Jesus meets religious folks. So far, everything is just to our liking. Jesus with religious people in a religious place, predictable, stable, all making sense. While Jesus is talking to Elijah and Moses, he begins to glow. He becomes dazzlingly white, kind of just brilliantly bright. And then it's over. And if you ask me, that's when the real transfiguration happens. Jesus leaving the high holy place with high holy people and slipping quietly again among the general populace. The good news ringing off the mountain today is that God is not content staying in holy places with holy people but will shapeshift and transfigure and take whatever form it requires to be with us. Truth be told, I think we religious folks like our God to be stable, predictable, because then we can find God when we want God, and we can avoid God when we want to avoid God. But that's not why the church is partying today. The celebration today is that God will do whatever it takes, take whatever form it requires to be with us. That's what it means to be loved by a transfiguring God. You can't say we weren't warned. Uh, When we were brought into the faith, the church mothers and fathers poured water over our heads. Note the element of choice. They didn't baptize us in concrete, saying, now stay put, stay firm, this is where you're supposed to be. They took this fluid element and they bathed us in it and said, welcome to life with God, this God who will take many shapes, will fill any container you put God in and overflow those containers, this God who ultimately will be relentlessly pursuing us. That's what we're celebrating in our baptisms today. God pouring God's self over the candidates and again over us and promising to take whatever form it requires to be with us. God coming down off the mountain, being transfigured. God with us. That's why this Lent at Edenden Street, starting today, we are practicing coming down off the mountain with Jesus. Here's what I mean. When the pandemic first hit about a year ago now, uh, it 
hit on a Wednesday, everything locked down, and uh, we immediately in the church said, well, let's just take all of our, our things and go online, and that's how we'll maintain communion and connection. And it's been a year of learning, and it's been rich, and it's been hard. And after a year of seeking to do that, here's what we've heard from you. That what you need most are not live images from the holy mountain, but an experience of a God who's transfiguring God's self and residing with you where you are. And so this Lent, we're coming off the mountain. We're following Jesus into the normal, general populace. We're going to be centering ourselves on watching God fill the spaces where we find ourselves. Mostly for us, that's in our homes. We're going to watch God take shape among us as we pay attention to how we do our daily life of going to bed and rising, of how we get dressed, of how we listen for God, how we breathe, how we eat. The center of our faith is not going to be weekly on this holy mountain with holy people. The center of our faith is going to be every day in every place with everyone because that's what it means to be with the transfiguring God. We pray that this Lent is a holy Lent for you. We pray that whatever space you're in, whatever walls you are surrounded by, whatever time that might have felt like it just is the same day over and over, we pray that this Lent, that all of those spaces and all of those times and the people that you are with become sanctified, holy. We pray that they are also transfigured because that's where God is residing. May our Lent be holy and blessed as we celebrate the gospel truth today on the Feast of the Transfiguration. And that simply is this, that the only thing more constant than change is God's unchanging desire to be with us no matter what. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the Holy Sacrament of Baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church and we are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the spirit. All of this is a free gift, the gift of God's grace evident in Jesus Christ and the ongoing work of the Holy Spirit. Today we have the great privilege of witnessing the baptism of Charlotte Jean Calloway. Nikki and Hud, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? We do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? We do. We do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? We do. And will you nurture Charlotte and Christ's Holy Church, that by your teaching and example she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself, to profess her faith openly, and lead a Christian life. So say we will. We will. Jay and Michelle, as Charlotte's godparents, as representatives of the church, do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? We do. We do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include Charlotte now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround these persons with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be the true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. Wonderful. Brothers and sisters in Christ, would you pray with me as we give thanks over this water? Let us pray. Eternal Father, when nothing else existed but chaos, your Holy Spirit swept across dark waters and you brought forth glorious light. It was by the waters, O God, and by the rainbow in the skies that you promised with all creation not to destroy, but rather to redeem. 
It was by the waters of the Red Sea that you delivered your people from Pharaoh. And through that mighty exodus, God claimed to people who would worship you and know you. And, oh God, it was in the water of Mary's womb that your son, Jesus Christ, was nurtured in love as he came forth into the world to preach good news to the poor and to the oppressed and delivery to the captive, recovery of sight to the blind, as he called forth his disciples and baptized them in the name of your, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, sending them out to make disciples of all nations, O God. We give you thanks. And we ask, O God, that you would pour forth your Holy Spirit on this water, that it would be a means of salvation and grace, that Charlotte, as she is washed clean in this water, would be reborn in your love, that clothed in Christ and dying to sin, she might be raised with him and share in his eternal victory. All this we ask in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. What name shall be given to this beautiful girl? Charlotte Jean. Charlotte Jean. <laughs> Charlotte Jean, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the Spirit work within you, that being born of water and the Spirit, you be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ, a healer in this world, a means of renewal and rebirth. Amen. Friends, I introduce to you Miss Charlotte Jean, and we cannot wait to see the ways God will be at work in and through you, as you teach her in the way of life and in the way of Jesus Christ, and as she teaches us the church, how might we might be a people who are always on the move, always on mission, always reaching the next generation of disciples. And so, members of the household of God, I commend to you, Charlotte, to your love and to your care. And I pray that you would do all in your power to increase her faith, to confirm her in hope, and to protect her in love. We give thanks for all that God has already given us. And we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Wonderful. And friends, in response to the good news preached and proclaimed, the good news witnessed in the baptism of Charlotte Jean, I invite you to respond to God's grace and mercy through the generous giving of your gifts. Lord, I thank you for the ways that you surprise us, that you show up, that you do things unexpected. God, I pray that this morning would be one of those times, wherever we are, wherever we're watching, however we're watching. She would surprise us today, in Jesus' name. Be 
the mountaintop. God is taking any shape necessary to be with us. Might you discover God's presence wherever you go, and may you go with the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>